Good morning, and welcome to In Touch, a public affairs show dedicated to the health and welfare of Susquehanna Valley residents. At this time on Sundays, we sit down and meet representatives from various community organizations looking to make a difference in the lives of others. I'm Freddie Hammer, News Director at Backyard Broadcasting, and this morning I'll be sharing an interview I was privileged to do with Robert Garrett, President and CEO of North Central Site Services, and Lou Kolb, a local veteran broadcaster and co-worker of mine here at Backyard Broadcasting. Both accomplished men are blind. Today, we'll talk about the services North Central Site Services provides to six counties in the Susquehanna Valley and their roots here in Lycoming County. Plus, we'll also talk to Bob about his pending retirement from his 44-year stint with NCSS. Plus, we'll find out how members of this community can get involved, or if they or a family member are facing vision loss, how to get pointed in the right direction to get the help you need. Good morning, Bob, and thanks for being here. Good morning, and my pleasure. Hello, Lou Kolb. Hi, Freddie. Nice to be here. Lou, you are quite familiar with Bob, and not just from your connection with North Central Site Services. I am good friends with Bob. I've known him since we were, what, nine years old? I think so, yeah. Lodge Camp. Absolutely. Uh, which is a camp for the blind in the mountains of Pennsylvania. Uh, and uh, I have served on the board over the years and have uh, utilized their services. I have been a client of theirs as well. So, yes, I've been involved uh, uh, several ways with NCSS. Well, Bob, tell me a little bit about what North Central Site Services does. We provide three main services to Lycoming and five other counties. And those are to provide employment opportunities for people who are blind, provide services to help people who are losing their vision adapt to the vision loss and to stay independent living in their own home or wherever they might be living. And the third is our prevention of blindness program where we screen children and look for the presence of symptoms that might indicate vision problems. And if you can correct vision problems early enough, then it's going to be very positive in terms of a lifetime of vision. Bob, do you feel you make a good impact in the community here? I'm a little biased in that, in that area. Obviously, I, I run the organization, so I think we've done a pretty good job over the years. Yes, I think so. I believe overall we have a good name in the community. We're well-known, and people who are visually impaired know to come to North Central Site Services. You have had some name changes during your tenure. Or, as we were often called, the Blind Association. Our original name was the Lycoming County Association for the Blind. We were incorporated in 1957. And um, I, I actually uh, took over, I, I started working here in 1974 and became the uh, director in uh, 1986. So I, I've, it's been my entire life and uh, about, I'm not about, but 23 days until I retire. <laughs> what an exciting time for you. It is. Did you start as a client with this organization? I did not. I started out, I actually worked in the industry, uh, putting together rubber doormats for one summer. And then some funding came through. I had just graduated from college and the director at the time gave a, uh, a long haired, uh, inexperienced blind guy an opportunity to become a, a caseworker to work with people who are losing their vision. And I moved from there to become the director of services and then ultimately was appointed the, um, the then the executive director and ultimately president CEO in 1986. So it's been a great run. We've um, had some great success. Uh, I attributed that to our very supportive board of directors and, and many valuable employees that we've had here over the years. Lou, how have you utilized the services here at NCSS? Well, one of the most useful services that they provide that I've used is uh, is grocery shopping. Uh, when you can't see, uh, it's difficult walking into any store because they aren't set up for that. They're set up for you to walk around the aisles, particularly grocery stores. Pick out what you want, bring them to the counter, and then uh, take your bags and uh, go on your way. It's hard to do when you can't see not only can't drive there, but you can't even see where you are, and what you're doing once you get there. And uh, uh, one of the services they provide here is uh, grocery shopping for clients. And, and they have helped um, my wife and I, Kathy's sighted, but has her own uh, difficulties, health difficulties. So I utilize that service, uh, which is life-changing. I mean, you have to you got to get groceries, you know, mm -hmm. and get things like that done. And now there are services like Instacart, which we use, but I know a lot of people still rely on NCSS to help them with 
with things like that that they have trouble doing uh, on their own. Bob, has technology affected how you work with clients? It has. Uh, there, the technology has definitely made an impact for most people. And, and I would say not categorically, but uh, primarily for younger people. Uh, older folks still are going to want to have that uh, someone to take them to the store, which is fine. And, you know, that's your personal choice as far as I'm concerned. Um, you can either, you can try to use Instacart or one of the other, uh, the other services out there. And if that works for you, great. The other side of the story, though, is that for, for everybody, going to the grocery store is a social event, too. And if you are blind or visually impaired, you're more than likely you're going to be much more secluded, much more removed from uh, the activities of, of, of daily living. And so the actual social experience of going with one of our people to the store is a valuable is a valuable thing. So th there is that too. Um, it, 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 now, with the iPhone and other uh, devices that are out here, these days, it, it truly is an amazing time where I think the gap between where we have been in the past and currently in terms of being able to access information uh, and, and participate in society through the same kind of methods that everybody else does is a lot closer and a lot, a, a lot sm a smaller gap these days than it used to be. Through that technology, maybe, do you find that a sighted person relates easier these days with those who are visually impaired? Uh, no, no, I, I'm just going to be blunt about it. I don't think yeah, so. I agree. Why do you think? I, 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 I just think there's a lot of fear. I Lou, Lou calls it so well. He said something you know, years ago that has stuck with me and I've repeated it and, and given credit every time I say, it. um, you, when you meet someone who is blind for the first time, there's that initial fear. Oh my God, no eye contact. And, you know, we we really it makes you nervous. Yeah. It most, really does. Most communication between people begins with something visual. Absolutely. You look into a room, you see somebody, you know, you might wave or something and then you speak to each other. Yes. But it starts visually. And if you don't have that. Right. There's, there's no way to, uh, there's no ignition, there's right. no way to start the conversation. You know, we keep trying and uh, maybe converting one person at a time, but uh, I would say there's not a lot of progress. Well, I hope that can change. Isn't that what North Central Site Services really is here to do? It is. And Absolutely. I think it's really important to talk about the capabilities, not the uh, inabilities of people who are blind. That's extremely important. Uh, I think we create a, a positive environment for that to happen. This is a very nice building. It's not some uh, dingy looking uh, low end place that sometimes uh, not for profits get relegated to. I'm very proud of what we've been able to do here. I'll ne I will never, um, uh, you know, apologize for success. And we've uh, we've done and we've done a great job and we've grown the organization uh, from one county now to six counties, changing our name, moving on to providing a lot more of the uh, assistive technology along with um, growing our industry operation and our services too. So it's it's been a great run and um, now time for a change. And, you know, I want to I get out while I still am, you know, semi, you're not feeble or, or, or a bumbling idiot. And so far, I think I'm okay with that. Lou, have you been a volunteer here over the years? Uh, I have. Well, I volunteered back in the 90s. I was on the board. Yes, you were. Yeah. Uh, president once. Uh, yes. Uh -huh. Back in the 90s. Uh, it was a great experience. Um, uh, one of the best things about it was uh, that Bob has always had a uh, great uh, board made up of people from the community, business people and people who are leaders in their fields. And, uh, you know, you get to you serve on the board like that. You get to watch how they lead, how they run, conduct meetings. And when you're when you're a person with a disability, it's, it, it, it can be an easy thing to get stuck in your own world. But, you know, I worked on the radio. I'm a disc jockey and a radio personality. And so I have to provide the same things to the listeners that a sighted personality would provide. And it was very helpful to me to, to learn the ways of the sighted world. And one of the best ways of doing that was to watch the people on the board, uh, particularly the officers and executive committee and whatnot, and how they, they do what they do. And I was exposed to a lot of really good people through my experience uh, here on the site services board and, and learned a lot 
from just from watching them. Bob, do you appoint people to the board? It's elected. Uh, we have a governance committee that uh, reviews the needs of the organization and then decides on who most appropriate to serve. So it is. An, it's certainly not a shoe in. I I have made changes over the years to be sure that we get the most qualified people who desire to serve the organization and can meet our needs, whether it be at the legal level or finance or fundraising or um, uh, governance or personnel or whatever we need. Is the new CEO of NCSS, Brian Patchett, the man who will be taking your place after your retirement, a member of the board? He is not. Uh, now, I, I currently am, but uh, and I'm not sure what Brian will want to do going forward. It, and it's never been a problem. Um, uh, it, it, uh, there's never been a vote that's been even close. <laughs> we, we, we learn to work together to, to resolve what's best for the organization, and that has to always be in the front and center of what's, uh, what's going on here at the organization. What attitudes or ideas have you encouraged over the years here to close that gap we were talking about between sighted and non-sighted people? Well, I, th I think one of the things that we do on a daily basis as people who are blind is, is simply try to, to show that uh, you know, you're you're blind second. You're a person first. It's really important that not all not all people who are blind uh, can play music. I mean, I happen to be able to, but it's it's not. <laughs> you, I, I do actually. I play I play bass guitar. Nice. You just try to make people forget the fact that you are blind and that you're a person first. And I always, it's a bit of a, a challenge sometimes, but it ultimately it's a compliment when people just kind of walk away and say, oh, I forgot I need to help you out, you know. Lou, any thoughts on that? I, I think one of the best things that uh, sighted people can do when approaching a blind, a person who is blind uh, is find out what they need. Don't assume you know what they need. Right, it's, right, uh, very true. Uh, it, it is, um, I, I was standing on a street corner once, I was waiting to be picked up, and I probably was too close to the street so that made it look like I wanted to cross the street. <laughs> In fact, I was just waiting to meet somebody. Well, without so much as a buy your leave, somebody came along, grabbed my elbow, and hustled me across the street. <laughs> Been there, done that. Yeah. Happened to me too. It, it happens a, a, yeah. an awful lot. So you know what you do? You just let it go. Yeah. And you and you turn around and when they say thank you very much, and when they leave, you, they, you turn around and go back across the street. That's right. <laughs> um, so so they'll know best what they what they need, and uh, so check with them before you uh, impart. And, and that person meant well, you know. They were oh, absolutely sure, but uh, but they didn't fully understand what I uh, what I needed and wanted. So, right. So always check. To find out how can people ask questions and find out more about what you do here at NCSS? You can call us at 570-323-9401. It's an automated attendant, but you can always push zero and get our front uh, our front desk. There's plenty of information. We've just updated our website not that long ago, and that's www.nc as in North Central site s i g h t dot o r g. And we we also have a Facebook page. And uh, I'll, I'll give Lou uh, kudos because he does that and I do not. <laughs> That's the best way to get a hold of us. And uh, we'll put you in, the, in, in touch with the correct individual, the correct department within the organization. And uh, if you know anyone who is in need of uh, services to help them with their vision loss, that would be the way to do it. Did you say you're retiring in 28 days? 23, 23. 23. I don't Let's mean get it. Extra Let's days. get it right here. So what are some of the accomplishments you look back on fondly? I think one of the greatest things is moving, uh, well, renovating our building on Memorial Avenue. Uh, back in, uh, I believe it was 1990, we expanded it. Uh, and then the big move was when we moved from 901 Memorial up here to 2121 Reach Road from a 20,000 square foot building on three floors, which was not conducive to a lot of growth to the 65,000 square foot building here on Reach Road. We were very, very fortunate to be going through some extremely positive times in terms of uh, revenue. We, we paid the building off in two and a half years. We're completely debt free. I am very proud of the fact that we've been able to employ lots of people we've had great people working in all departments never missed a payroll never even got close and and you know we've always paid our bills and i've always been very humbled 
by my chance to lead the organization. It's, it's been a wonderful opportunity for me, and I, I certainly can't thank the, the residents of uh, our county and the surrounding counties for being so supportive of North Central Side Services. Before we go, Lou, what's a memorable or funny moment you have with Bob, professional or personal? <laughs> oh, geez. When, when I was, uh, gosh, I don't know, maybe maybe all the people involved here, uh, hopefully the statute of limitations is up. <laughs> Do you, you remember, Bob, when, when we were getting, uh, it was when I was president and we were applying to United Way and uh, we thought that, that we deserved a little more than they had allocated to us. Uh -huh. And uh, and we, uh, so we, we, we made our case and it was something that I had never had occasion to do before. And we went to United Way and said, hey, you know, this is, you guys are using us in your ads and everything. I do. I remember this. And, yeah. uh, and we think that we deserve a little bit more of an allocation from you. And, you know, we weren't uh, putting them down or anything because they do a tremendous job. Mm -hmm. the way it does. Yeah. But uh, we made our case and they agreed with us. I got a nice feeling of accomplishment. Bob Garrett, CEO and president of North Central Site Services. There might be some big shoes to fill here. Thank you very much. I, pre I appreciate that. It's, um, as I said, I've been very humbled by the opportunity. It's not easy to get a job when you are, when you're blind. Mm -hmm. It's just not. And when you have an opportunity to work at a place for so long and see the changes and for sure, uh, some of the some of the ideas came from me. It was a team effort, though. And at the end of the day, I'm I'm very proud of our accomplishments. And I know going forward, I'm leaving the organization in great hands. And Brian Patchett, our new uh, president and CEO, I've been training with him, and I'm I'm sure he will do a good job. And he will do things differently than me, and uh, grow the organization. I'm very confident in that. Good luck to you in all your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to you, too, a co-worker of mine and a new friend here at Backyard Broadcasting, Lou Kolb. I appreciate you being here today. Thank you, Freddie. Well, that about wraps it up for our In Touch program. It's produced locally here in our studios at 1685 Four Mile Drive in Williamsport. To get in touch with us regarding questions, comments, or topic ideas, you can call us weekdays between the hours of 8 a.m. and 1 p.m. at 570-323-8200. You can also write to In Touch, care of Backyard Broadcasting, 1685 Four Mile Drive in Williamsport, PA, 17701 Attention Freddie Hammer or email me at fhammer at backyardbroadcasting.com. Again, thanks for listening to In Touch, a production of Backyard Broadcasting. <laughs>